Hi everybody, Gary Fong here, and I have three of the new Sony cameras that have been extremely talked about, and uh, we're here at Film Factory in Kelowna, BC, doing extended premium length videos of each of these cameras, uh, teaching you how to unlock the crazy awesome features of the technology for your uh, photography and your creativity. So uh, I'll just show them to you real quick. This is the RX104. This is the A7R2. And on my right shoulder here is the RX102. So what are these and when would you use them? So let me split this up and, well, first of all, let me tell you what they have in common. They all have new back illuminated sensor, which greatly increases ISO sensitivity and decreases ISO noise. And the way that they've done that is they've taken what used to be the sandwich circuitry of having the wiring in between the diodes and the sensor and simply moved the wiring to the rear. Therefore, the light is not blocked by the wiring, which used to be the case. Having done that now, they're able to really push the envelope on ISO sensitivity, and we're gonna do a lot of tests on these to show you what we're able to do. And it's important to do uh, ISO sensitivity increases because on cameras like this now, uh, these two right here are one inch sensors. They're very, very small sensors, yet they're still 20.4 megapixels, which means the pixel size is tiny. And tiny pixel sizes mean that those little tiny buckets can't capture as much light as maybe we would see with the Sony A7S at 12 megapixels. An extreme example of uh, the ISO technology would be this camera right here, which is a 42.4 megapixel camera and with a, a camera that has that many pixels, it's extremely important to do a couple things. One, of course, is to get rid of the noise, and the noise is very high, potentially, with small pixels, like I've mentioned before, because they capture little light compared to a large pixel. Also, mirrorless is pretty important for a high-resolution sensor, because mirrors can cause vibration, and that vibration can move the sensor ever so slightly, and with a 40.4 megapixel, tiny, tiny, 42.4 uh, megapixel, tiny, tiny uh, pixel, if there's a little bit of uh, shake, that pixel moves by a fair percentage over maybe a large one that if it shook that much, the pixel itself wouldn't move that much. So vibration can cause a loss in image sharpness. It also is important to have, of course, that back illuminated sensor. And the third thing about the wireless, or I'm sorry, the mirrorless, is that you don't have to do micro lens adjusting all the time. And with a really large megapixel camera like the Canon 5 uh, DSR at 50 megapixels, without the ability to focus on sensor, the difference between the focusing uh, length or calculation and the actual sensor distance can change based on different lenses which have to be then adjusted and memorized by serial number but also by heat of the camera. The heat of the camera can actually expand things. We're talking about very very small amounts but enough to affect the sharpness of the cameras. So that's why this one is such a such a huge performer. So let me tell you when and why you would want to buy any of these cameras. So this one right here is about 3,200, 3,300 US dollars. Very, very top of the line. It's a full frame sensor, high resolution, great ISO. This has been just set the media world on fire in photography because uh, this is so often an um, overused term, but groundbreaking would be one way that this has been described. The performance tests that people have seen on this have been incredible, and I actually uploaded uh, some images that I took with this thing at the high ISO resolutions, like 25600, you'll see that I did a lot of action photos on it, and it was extremely sharp. The other thing, too, is it has five-axis stabilization, and that is important, too, for sharpness because you want to make sure that the camera doesn't move a lot. It also enables you to mount, say, Canon or Nikon lenses through third-party adapters, and when you do that, 
all of those lenses that didn't have image stabilization now have stabilization built in because that's built into the camera. Another thing about this camera and all of the new cameras that have just come out, they all have 4K recording, which is native into the camera. Now this is something that hasn't been previously available before, even on the amazing uh, A7S, you had to put a 4K recorder onto the camera in order to record the 4K being piped out of it. These can actually record directly into the camera uh, up to half an hour on the uh, this one, the A7R2 and the uh, RX10. So that is this one. This one is meant for the professional or advanced amateur photographer who wants the best camera on the planet for sharpness and ISO sensitivity. There is none better, uh, and I'm not alone in this opinion, than the, uh, the A7R2. These guys right here, I'm super excited about. And the reason I'm excited about them is they have a couple of technologies that are quite different. This camera right here has a 24 to 70 millimeter f1.8 to 2.8 Zeiss uh, Variosonar T-Star, high quality optic. This camera right here I think is super remarkable because it has a 24 to 200 millimeter f2.8 fixed uh, aperture. And because they have the small um, sensors, you can shoot macro at quite a close distance, uh, a strikingly close distance without the need for extension tubes or macro lenses or things like that. They also both have high frame rate recording at up to 1 960th of a second. That is a ton of fun. It actually gives you a whole bunch of different reasons to go out, throw things at walls or um, throw pies in people's faces or whatever because at high frame rates you can actually now see the world in extremely slow motion and it's a lot of fun. All of these cameras have wireless connectivity. They also have uh, NFC which uh, means near field communication which in short means that you can look at an image on your screen, touch a compatible Android phone to it and have it instantly transfer without having to really do anything other than touch the two cameras together. This guy right here would be my choice at about a thousand US dollars as the ultimate travel camera. You have 24 millimeter f1.8 so when you're in low light situations high ISO sensitivity because of the back illuminated sensor, Zeiss optic and 4k recording. All of that in a camera that is this small compared to my mobile phone, okay? So this one right here, huge fan of that camera. This camera right here is basically the same camera in a larger package with a better lens. This one has a, a 24 to 200 millimeter lens, which I did a zoom comparison to show you how extreme the zoom is on this one. And it, again, it's a Zeiss uh, T-Star Vario Sonar, high quality optic. It also does everything that the RX100 does, but in a bigger package. This one is about 1300 US dollars. Uh, why would somebody want this camera? This camera is a great uh, SLR style camera. It has a fixed, non-interchangeable lens, but it has a hot shoe, so you can do your flash, you can do off-camera flash. It also is XLR sound uh, capable, so if you're shooting your 4K video and you want to have an external sound source, you have sound in either through the red 8th inch mini uh, input or the XLR connection on top. One thing, going back to this guy I wanted to mention is it has the selfie monitor. So if you're recording yourself a lot, it's pretty neat to be able to see yourself. Or if you're shooting a lot of selfies, this has the tilt-up 180 degree display. It also has, uh, I know it doesn't look like it, because it doesn't look like there's a viewfinder, but it does have a pop-up viewfinder. And it's right here, and it's two-step. You, you pop it up and pull it out. And this little guy is also a uh, Zeiss T-Star optic. So it's very, very high-quality stuff. So Sony has, again, like I've joked in other videos, come out with new cameras about every 15 minutes, uh, always groundbreaking. Now the new ones have 
altogether uh, back illuminated sensor, which is a huge manufacturing achievement, and they also have on the one inch uh, the high frame rate video recording. So those are the new cameras. That's who would probably want to use them and why. And um, make sure to check the tests that are on, especially with the uh, high, uh, high ISO sensitivity. Now we are going to be spending quite a bit of time doing very extremely detailed virtual cameras, um, premium videos to show you how to unleash the power of all of the features of the new cameras.